So I've laid in the floor on the back side of the diamond now. That's taken a lot longer than it looks, trying to make sure we've got everything square so that the rollers on the front diamond now are exactly parallel with the rollers on the back diamond and obviously also in line with each other. So the floor on this side is tack welded to the uh, support on this dyno and the same for this one. Um, that piece of angle is bolted to the dyno so the two halves of the floor can come apart and obviously be taken off if you need to get in there. So I've got some 100 mil flat bar um, to use to sandwich each side of the dyno so that's obviously where they'll be sliding. So they won't get to move away from each other. This is going to be bolted so I've gone through now and drilled the first one and I'm going to go through now and mark and then drill this second piece. And I've just got a template I've been using to make that a bit easier. So I'm just going to go down through and mark each one of these a minute. Right, so I've marked all of those holes and I'll come down through and draw them out now. So you can see I've got those two bars crossed, so now all the holes are drilled, that's ready to bolt down. And I'm not going to bolt it for a minute because I'm going to take all this off now so I can weld these ends properly and also on the underside. And I'll probably paint some of that up before I put it back on the underside that you can't get to. Right, okay, can't quite remember where it was in the last clip. Fair with the videoing here a little bit. So I think in the last clip we just finished doing the, well, doing as much as I can with the floor. Um, I've welded, finished welded all the top sides now, drilled all the holes for the center, center support plates. Um, so those are now ready to lift off. They come off in two halves, so I can weld underneath all of these end beams. I'll then paint all underneath it while I can get to it, and then I'll probably refit it and paint the top on there. Uh, so we've made the up ramp also onto the back roller. That's just made out of some steel I've had kicking around for ages. That's just a bit rusty, but I'll clean all that up before I paint it. So I've just done that the same as on the other one. It's not actually bolted on, there's another one that goes on the back there. And just gives you a bit of a ramp up onto the top of the roller. Um, if you hit the, if you try hitting the side of the roller, you just end up spinning like crazy and it gets a little bit sketchy when you're trying to mount the dyno. So I've welded that in there, cut a plate, fill plate then to go in the back. Obviously there's no need for a ramp at the back because you're never going to be going off the back. So that's just a flat plate, just in the aid of any extra clearance behind that roller gives you clearance for straps and getting your hands up underneath and stuff try to do it all as much as possible to get as much clearance underneath um, hopefully we haven't gone too low with the floor to the point where we get clearance problems on the front of the back if we have i'll have to bring it up so each side of the, the floor is bolted so it can be moved up and down if it needs to be but we had the luxury before in the old workshop when we only had the front roller obviously we had the pit right behind it which was awesome because you could walk down in the pit and reach right up underneath and put well, straps on pretty much any way you like. So we've tried to drop that floor down as much as we can uh, just to get as much room as we can. I've cut another fill plate to go on the top there. I've put fairly thick uh, five mil check plate on the top of everything because you, you end up walking on top of it when you're in the car and you're putting straps on and stuff. And I've cut a plate to go on the top of there. It's not in position at the moment. Also cut and welded two plates together that sit in that gap there. This is all, these top plates all bolt on, so I've drilled and then tapped holes into the frame so you can take all the top off. Same with the, the filler plate there and the ramp, that all unbolts so you can get your hands right in around it. And I've just in now started working on uh, boxing in the actual retarder end. Um, so this is just going to be normal sheet steel. This isn't bolted on because you don't really need to get this off, everything comes out the top. So done that one there, done the side one just about to start working on the back now so we'll do another piece there with a corner cut out and a straight across the back again have to cut some bits out for the wheels and then just one more on the end just replicating the other one basically exactly the same thing oh, i've also welded on the strap hooks so some three ton weld on hooks weld on clamps whatever you want to call them spring loaded latches so makes it easy for just clicking a strap in there rather than having to pull the strap all the way through which is what we used to have which was a bit annoying 
So they're just on all four corners. And what I'll do is I'll end up putting some eyelets in several places on the chassis um, and also on the floor out in front and probably all one off the side. So there's plenty of places you can tie into. And then obviously at the back here, we've got this frame, obviously all on the floor, which is going to be bolted down. Um, so I'll probably put some eyes across the back here. That'll give me plenty of options for strapping at the back. So yeah, it's coming along. We just get this plating finished and then I'll probably be taking it all apart. I'm just starting to paint all these bits out, which is a bit of a nightmare at the minute because the weather has gone damp as heck. As you can see, everything's been flash rusting because I come in here the other morning and just everything is covered in a thin film of water, which is not ideal when you're working with raw steel, but that's just the joys of living in the UK. So we got that back dyno completely boxed in. All the covers, that, there's another plate that goes in the back there. I've got that missing at the moment. Uh, so the next step is to make up some mounts. So I'm gonna put a hydraulic cylinder on both sides of the dyno on the frame rail. Uh, that's what I'll use to push that back bed forward and back to give you adjustable wheelbase. So I'll probably mount it somewhere back here and then tie it into the front of the dyno, do the same on both sides. To get the mount for that though, I need to bring the dyno right back into its minimum position so I can then bottom the ram out. And uh, that'll give me my position to mount the bottom of the ram. And then I should have enough stroke in the ram to bring it out to full. Obviously we're limited now by when this is closed right up versus when it's open right up. So I did calculate all that before to hopefully end up with a usable uh, range of wheelbases in between. The other thing though we need to do at the same time is obviously the control, so electrics and air basically, that goes to that back dyno is obviously moving with the dyno. So I've just got some cable tray, uh, or cable track, sorry. So I've made up a little hanger on the side there, which will basically support the lower half of the track. And then obviously the top half will be mounted to the dyno um, with a second support supported from the other bed. And that just gives the cable somewhere to be that's safe and reduces the bend slightly. Obviously it's not a high wear item because it's not something that moves very much that often. Better than just having it lying around on the floor where it's inevitably going to get tripped up on and straps are going to get tied up into it and it'll just get destroyed. So that's the plan there but again I need the dyno to be closed right in to work out where I can bring that support so that it doesn't then interfere when it opens. So now that we've got obviously all of this in position, things have become even heavier than they already were, which is very heavy. Um, so I'm just going to use the port power to push that close now, and then we can start mounting those bits and pieces I've just said about. Right, so I've added some plates on the side here now to carry that cable track. So what we've got is there's two pieces of steel on top of each other here. You just about see on the end. So the lower one is supported by the stationary part of the dyno. Along with that piece there, that will support the top of the cable track. And then loop around and then this top piece that's lying on top is then bolted to the sliding part of the dyno. Uh, so the, the track will sit on top of that and the two will then just slide on top of each other. That will support the bottom of it. It'll then curl around and come up to here and that'll just give that cable a nice smooth run to go forward and back, hopefully without snagging on anything or getting caught up. All right, just making these brackets now to hold the ram. So this is gonna be the stationary end of the ram sitting down on the side frame. I've just got it tacked together, basically just, well, I've bought out some 30 mil holes and some plate, uh, made up a pin. So you can't get this back side here, it'll be up against the side of the dyno. So you can't get to that to put a pin in that side. Obviously, I don't want the pin drifting out, so I've decided to just plate the pin, make it like a drawbar pin, and I'll put two holes in the end of it. Tap two holes in there, so you'll put the pin in and bolt it in, and then the pin can't go anywhere. And I'm just going to leave a wish tack for a minute just to make sure everything lines up. Right, so we're getting really close to tearing this all apart again now to clean it all up and start painting it. Just a couple of little things wanted to get done before I take it apart. There's quite a lot that depends on 
the measurements of these two being in the right position. So I just wanted to get all of that tied up while I know these are in the fully closed and perfectly in line position. So I've made up some mounts for the backs of the rams now. So I just made up some plates and then made up a pin which bolts in. Um, this side I could have actually got away with an R clip, but the other side is up against the side of the dyno. So I've just used a bolt to retain. I can't really get in the back side of that very easily, so I've just used a bolt to retain the pin. And obviously another pin on the front of the other bed. And obviously the ram on the floor there on the same the other side. So that'll just be fixed at that end. And that's what will then give us that movement of the rear bed. All the covers are just sat on at the moment with no bolts, bar that back one which is missing. So it's all, all boxed in here now. Done that cable tray like I said before. Um, so I just started fabbing up with a pole welded on there, which is what I made up a little plate just to contain that hydraulic pack. So you've just got a single phase hydraulic pack on that pole there. That's obviously for operating those two rams. And I'm also gonna have the main control box will be somewhere on that pole. I think I'm gonna put the actual monitors on there as well. Being that, that, being that we've now got the two beds, it won't matter whether we're doing front drive or rear drive, the cars are all gonna be basically in the same place. So I can't see any reason why I can't just fix the, the dining monitors to that pole and they can pretty much stay there. Uh, you remember before we used to have the cart, which you can almost see in the background there, which I used to have to roll around because obviously if you're doing front drive, the, the, um, the car was sort of here. If you're doing rear drive before, the front of the car was over there. So you used to have to move that around, but should should pretty much stay in the same place now. So I think we can just fix it on there, which will be a lot better actually, because you won't have got the cables flapping around on the floor and weren't worrying about tripping over them or breaking them. So it will just be fixed in one position. So I think pretty much other than just working out where I'm going to mount that control box and possibly make up some brackets to support the monitors. Once that's done, it's going to basically tear the whole thing apart. We'll pull this walking floor off, paint all the frame in situ, probably just paint that by hand. It's not worth lifting all this up for the sake of spraying it. It's not going to make a lot of difference. It's going to end up getting scuffed and stuff anyway with straps and people walking on it. So we'll probably paint the frame on the floor, pull all the panels off, the walking floor out, paint all that. Externally, you can probably spray most of that. And then obviously put it all back together for the final time, bolt it all down. And then we just got to anchor it to the floor. And then it's pretty much wiring, air, strapping points. And there's still quite a few bits and pieces to do, but the bulk of the fabrication now is hopefully done.